That's the sink. Perfect. Let's go. We on? Yeah. All right. Shall we? Oh yeah. Good luck, bro. Good luck. <laughs> Good game. <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of the Bandwagon Bible with my good friend, business partner and companion, Thomas Dela Cruz Cronin. What's good, my guy? Let's stick to uh, business partner and my back of friends. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, bro? All these times, that's how it's going to be. First of all, I just want to say to everyone, if you can count how many times I say um or I say bro today, <laughs> I think that would be much to appreciate. Please don't I'm, count me. I'm going to try and cut it down a heap because I really listened to the last podcast with Matty. I think it's just because I'm so generally like, because he's a mate, like close mate, they just think it's so easy to talk to someone and say bro all the time. And then you listen back to me like, why do I, I say, say that all the time? This is the podcast, time. man. I've got to yeah. stop saying that. <laughs> um, so if everyone wants to keep account on that, that keep me accountable as well. Now, I'm just going to address the uh, rumor, address the uh, the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. If you follow me on social media, I've declared no social media uh, for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year? I'm I gonna, thought it was a month. No, nah, no. Nah, I said for the rest of the year. Now, Damn. I feel like it's going to be extremely challenging. Absolutely. The three whole months. But I've also made the decision with Lockie to grow my hair. Okay. Yeah. So he said he doesn't think I can have my hair up in 12 months. Now, like up in a bun. Yeah. yeah no. I don't want that at all because I just kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try and do it. Now, there's 300 bucks on the line for that one. Ooh. That's good cash. That's great money. That's cash we can take the casino you know <laughs> when we're finally on a lockdown. Now, because I made this, I need Tommy to keep me accountable and I need the podcast to keep me accountable. So every time we jump back on the podcast, we're going to chat about that. Yeah, righto. I'll Just like to it. see where I'm at and, and how we're going. And how much you're struggling. Yeah. Um, I'd struggle with that big time, honestly. I mean, I'm, like yesterday, like it was my first day off here and yeah. I was just like, I wasn't too bad. But like I was busy yesterday, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like you know yeah. when you're busy and you, you don't need social media or you don't yeah. use your phone too much? That was what it was like yesterday, but I won't be able to stay busy every day. Let's yeah. be honest. That's hard. Um, well, I'll, I'll just be back on Instagram without having noticed. I know, bro. Yeah. It's just a cycle, bro. Yeah, it's I'll just be like, sitting there and then my hand just comes out. From my phone. I don't know if it's a cycle for you, but it was just like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Just read Snapchat, me. Instagram, and then maybe TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Like just throw TikTok in there. <laughs> now, first of all, I just want to talk about how – I'm not influencing anyone to do anything like this, but I just feel like social media is extremely beneficial as well, especially for business, growing a business in yep. terms of that. Now, now, Tommy, we've been grateful enough to be able to connect with people with, you know, like for our brand, for example, with yep. people we don't know, we've never met. Um, I feel like just with all the ads and stuff that you run, we've we've got people to wear our gear that we don't know. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, So in terms of that, I think, I think – Social media is, is extremely beneficial. So don't get me wrong. I don't. Th- I don't. I'm not on any side or anything like that. But I guess from from my point of view, I just want to do it. Um, I feel like social media. I don't. I don't know. It's more like you got a. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like you've, you've got an audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I feel like I've always been that one where, like, I show my audience before I show my family shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I feel yeah. like if. Uh, my mum's always messaging me saying, oh, what's happened here? Like, what's happened yeah, there? What's happened that. there? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, maybe I should have told my parents first. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Instead of putting it straight um, on Instagram. I feel that. Um, I'm probably a bit the same. But, like, it's it's not a bad thing or anything like that. But I feel like as 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 we build a brand as people, like, I know your Instagram got deleted there a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Back someone, hacked you, someone hacked your Instagram. Yeah, Rest that's in our first world problem, eh? Hey. Uh, but, like, I feel like as when I was playing football, I feel like I had to build a brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like yeah. I had an audience because, you know, like I was playing fucking 20s for God's sake. Like, yeah, it means nothing. Cool. And, like, playing on a bit TV of cup, like, on TV, like, so what? And I feel like, you know, like, pretty cool. I had I had to have a big audience. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if you ever felt like that when, when you were playing footy. Yeah, yeah. I, I like... It's always just something that you wanted because you see everyone else with the, the massive following. Yeah. You just think, man, I'd be mad to have that, that massive following. But it really doesn't. It just doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> no, 100% it doesn't. And I feel like I went through that stage. What was that? Probably I'm probably out of it the last couple of years. But I like I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I need to get the followers up. Like, I need yeah. to do this. Like, I'm, when you think about it now, you need probably need more followers for, for your business. Yeah. Well, even, even that, which is a funny thing because there's so much of um, – the researching that we do behind finding our own influences for yep. for bandwagon yep. as a business, um, and and so much of it is 
like the follower number doesn't like, matter to me. Like I'd rather mm. find someone with three thousand followers yep. who actually gets people commenting engagement, and liking yeah. and, and engagement as opposed to the people with six hundred thousand followers mm. who you have no idea how many likes they get and all their comments seem fake if they get any comments at all. Yeah, you know? yeah, hundred percent. I I couldn't I couldn't agree with you anymore, there, Mister Thomas. Now, I guess. I feel like, yeah, the posts I've put up, like even like giving back and like doing that stuff and stuff, like yeah. we, you don't need to tell people about that stuff. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it is good to give, like make people aware of what you're doing. But I think at the end of the day, like people, f- like word of mouth is still a thing. Oh, absolutely, man. It's um, it should yeah. be your big your biggest. Um, it's it's your, your best sign of growth is if you're getting word of mouth from people, like real people talking to real people. Yeah, I agree, and I um, think, but even even that stuff. Like, there's nothing wrong with posting it, but you shouldn't be doing it for clout. Yeah, you you're not doing it for the purpose, and which I, to, yeah, so that you can post it later. Yeah, I agree, and I've never done, never ever done that, especially for something like giving back. Like, yeah, that's that's just what we do. Yeah, um, and we've just been blessed to be able to do that because we've got you know leftover gear and things like that. But yeah, yeah I just feel like word of mouth is is so much more. You know, valuable than what yeah, yeah. That's what a good throwing way to put a post it. up and and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, basically, keep me accountable. Um, we'll see how this social dilemma goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've still got what I will say is that I've still got bandwagon on my Instagram. Like we, st- I've still got yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I can still see the movement yeah, of everything that's going on there. Really. Um, I've got I've got like a Instagram for like my haircuts, but at the moment, I obviously can't use that. So, mm-hmm. um, that's not an issue. Because it's got like 200 followers. So it's kind of good. <laughs> I kind of feel like if I was to get back on Instagram, say I last till, you know, um, January. January, Maybe I just start a new Instagram where it's just friends and family. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Absolutely. I just feel like, I don't know, like I don't need to invite people into my life that I don't necessarily don't need to prove anything to. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And even saying that, like just keep a close, tight Nick group. But I do like to, you know, have a bit of a brand, especially for, for bandwagon. But I feel like yeah. we've... We're we build a foundation now where, you know, where we've we've got a brand. Yeah, well, you can you can kind of just have that brand through bandwagon. That's exactly you know? right. That's yeah. all I'm thinking. Like I can just put all my videos through there, and yeah. and you can do all that through there, which is which we're doing already. Um, so yeah, moral of a story. Um, I'm getting rid of it. I'm gonna try my best. So there we go. <laughs> See how we go. Um, but yeah, we'll uh we'll digress from there. Now. Tommy, not many people know we've we've obviously chatted about, but you've studied for you did study for some for some time in Canberra. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I guess sort of been you know in and out of things because you you didn't really find your niche. Um, I know in Canberra you can touch on it, but you you were studying something and then you moved up here and you studied something as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, if you want to tell everything like why you why you did what you did and and why why you sort of didn't go through with everything um that's a it's a hard one that one uh obviously moved to canberra initially was just football football was always mm. my priority back then yeah um, thought i was going to be a star didn't make it mum i'm so sorry <laughs> feels <laughs> <laughs> um no nah, i thought that that's all i really enjoyed at the time and and i went to uni there because that's what every, all of my friends were doing they were mm. going to university you know um, yeah. my brother went to university and uh, it was easy to get into the university of canberra into oh, uc so easy even i got in um, especially for people from rural towns so i could pretty much well, just even get to have that canberra raider badge yeah what was that program it was like yeah the they had a special athlete, program um elite, uh, something elite uh, league, uh, league elite of athletes, athletes or, something. or something like that yeah. elite athlete like we and it was a whole program, so if you were in the the Raiders system, where they'd help you out um, through university, drastically. Like, yeah, it was obviously a great idea. Probably a bit overboard. Some of the help that they <laughs> some yeah. of the help that they gave you, I could probably get away with late assignments at the drop of a hat, which I only realised towards the end, and I started abusing it a bit. Well, I remember the first assignment I submitted, right? And Lockie taught me how to basically stuff it up, so when you send it in, they can't open it. Yeah, right. So you give yourself more time to, to be able to... So they'll be like, oh, I see you've submitted it, but I can't open it. Yeah. So basically you've sent them a format that they can't open. Yeah. So anyways, so I think... you can keep working. I think we, we were <laughs> playing right. someone and I couldn't get it done. So then we come home from the bus trip. I then got myself extra three or four days. Yeah. Took it to... I was working as a teacher's aide at the time. Got the teachers at school to re... Like, look at it. Yeah. And, like, see where yeah. I could go better. And then ended up getting it remarked and ended up getting, like, a <laughs> distinction on it. <laughs> that's gold. Like, that's that's just to put into perspective that's how... Gold. 
how easy it was to get through Play when you system. had a badge on, yeah. your, on your name. Yeah, well, that was it. And, like, because I've still got the problem to, um, to this day of, of asking for help. So I hated, like, anything being late. I hated asking anyone else for help. But mm. there was a couple of times where I just, towards the end, where I was just way out of my league. I didn't, I didn't have the assignment nearly ready. Yeah. And um, one of the other boys that was doing uni was just like, oh, you can just say that you're in the league of athletes or whatever it is that the um, – the group was called and they'll just give you an extension on it. Mm. and you can just ask for like two Legit. weeks straight off the bat. I, so I just started abusing that towards the end and and then you'd just leave that assignment for two weeks <laughs> and do it the night before anyway. So, um, um, but I was doing nutrition down in Canberra just because it related to football. So I was just mm. the goal there was just to learn more about nutrition so that I could use it for, for rugby. Yeah. Um, moved up to Newcastle, did online um, from Canberra. Uh, online through Canberra. Let that truck pass by. Bit of a truck going through there, guys. Um, yeah, so I did nutrition online um, through the University of Canberra and then had a break for about half a year and then switched to business, which I started to enjoy a bit more. But um, well, the more you look into it, there's just there's a lot of courses out there that you can learn so much more just from doing and just from YouTube than... Oh, yeah. Than you can through university. Not that you don't learn at university, but just for what it costs, it's yeah. the ROI and it's just not worth it sometimes. Um, Especially with like, yeah, the hefty like what you're paying back like yeah, down yeah. the track. Like I, I think I went to uni for, I think it was like nearly, like I did a semester and yeah. then I've got like six grand, yeah. six, seven grand debt, which is not much compared to like some people some I know. People, yeah. Like people they've done five, six years and they've got like some ridiculous yeah. amount, like 160 grand or yeah, something. There's, like. Yeah, there's people like that, even like upwards of 30. Like that's a lot of money to be paying back from stuff that there's courses online from real people that yeah. are still practicing what they do. That you can get for like 100, 100 bucks. Yeah. And you can get through it in your own time. Yeah, 100%. I guess the last question on this topic, Tommy, is do you think you need some kind of education or, you know, degree? of what not to be successful. Before you answer that, I feel like from my point of view, it's a no because of what, I guess, the foundation we've built here. But if you want to touch on that, bro, I'd love you to. Uh, yeah, something I argue a bit um, with, pe- not argue, but I'm always for the for the no in that. Like you, you don't need it. Obviously, there's certain jobs that you will need. If you want to be a doctor, you need some sort of degree. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But again, it's just about what, um, how far your money can get you. You know what I mean? Like if, realistically if you want to take that 30 grand of debt you could spend you know a third of that and get the same amount of value out not that you don't get value at a university yeah. but it's just too overpriced at this point and and it takes you too long to get through you know you could be practicing what you preach and learning courses for you know a mi- like an absolute minimum of that price yeah um and you can actually learn more so well like yeah. obviously it depends on the field that you're going into or, or w- whatever you're thinking about learning but yeah yeah it, Doing that as well allows you to find your niche, mm. at least, you know, in a less expensive way. Enjoy. Yeah, because, again, like I did nutrition for two years or two and a half years and really didn't enjoy it at all. I, I don't even like science. I don't know why I picked it. I just picked <laughs> it. <laughs> and I started doing that and you don't enjoy it. And now I'm in, you know, now I'm in debt. Where Whereas if you started doing something else yourself – or online, you'd be in a whole lot less debt. You probably wouldn't even. Well, the be thing in is, debt. you let's and you say, can yeah. and you can learn that you don't like it and move to yeah. something else. Well, I feel like that's where the unis get you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they say, oh, you, you don't really have to pay for it because it's your tax. But in the end of it, it's it's coming out of your money. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? You're and then for it. let's say, for example, you know, I've I've done a couple of courses over the break that have been like you know hundred bucks. That's hundred bucks you actually get value out of. Yeah, and that's hundred bucks you can. You can look at and you can just go right out. Well, there's a hundred bucks down the drain. That's not fucking twenty grand. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly, man. And so. you're not and you're not stuck in it for three, four years. You know what I mean? So yeah. speed kills, man. If you don't like it, you can just move to something else. Hundred percent. Speed kills. Um, oh, I sucked at footy. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on that, man. <laughs> um, Coming from a rugby league background, right? Um, I feel like me and you can both vouch for this. You know, everything was rugby league. Everything was like, you know, like what's this going to be? I guess for your your driving point for for actually we'll, we'll touch on bandwagon really quick. Uh, what was your what's your driving point for bandwagon? Now before you answer, like, is it financial stability down the road? Is it building a foundation there that can, you know, like you know how ICE does the the blueprint, right? Yeah. Is it is it a point where you want to you know so people can relate to and they can you know they can 
gain knowledge from you or are you just looking to learn and grow as a person and sort of develop your skills along the way? A uh, bit of everything, should I say? Yeah, probably a bit of everything. Or definitely just learning and, and growing through business or, or the business skills itself. Um, and there's just a hundred different sides to that business that you yep. can grow in. So, you know, whether or not wherever bandwagon goes, um, these are skills that I could use just about anywhere, track. you know. Yeah. Um, and, and it's more so, it's just stuff that I really enjoy now. Um, kind of wish it's something that I got into it way earlier, but it's, you know, it's all that I watch. It's all that I listen to. Like all the podcasts I listen to are, are business podcasts. Yeah. Um, I probably listen to like at least three or four hours a day. Yeah. Of just random business podcasts, yeah. just having on the background. Yeah. It's all I watch on YouTube. Like yeah. it's, I've only just started watching footy again because that's like used to be all I watch. Yeah, um, I'm the same, bro. So it's just, I don't know, it's just something I really enjoy. Um, obviously, financial stability would be a fantastic bonus to have off the back of that. Uh, yeah. But oh, I suppose I'm not too worried about that. That'll come, I think, timing's Yeah, everything. exactly, man. You just got to put in the put in the work at the start, and that's something that comes down the track. And Yeah, put in the OT. Now, coming from a rugby league background, right, as we touched on before, I guess it's a different kind of drive. Now, was your, was your dream to... Would you, would you say your dream was to play NRL? Now, I know for me, I never had that in the back of my head where, you know, like I was – because it all happened so fast for me, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I signed my contract, I moved down the following week. Yeah. I never really thought about, you know, like I'm going to play NRL, like this is what I'm going to do. Because you, you know when people debut and they're like, oh, yeah, this is my dream, this is, you start. know, um, from the start. I don't know if it was – what was that like for you? Um, That's funny. I don't, I don't really know. It, I always had – I never really had like those big dreams as a kid, especially mm. when I was young. I didn't even start playing rugby league till I was fifteen or yeah. turning fifteen yeah. that year. Um, but uh, the the moment you start progressing in something, that's what was addicting to me. It was like yeah. when, once yeah. you you make that next step, and you yep. you just want to make that next step, and and kept doing it. And I think that's why I enjoyed the rugby league so much, is because I kept making steps that I didn't think I'd even make. Yeah, like yeah even getting into under sixteens, and then. You yep. make under-18s and there was always that next step yep. ahead of you, uh, which is kind of why I fell, fell out of love with it as well. Because um, once you get to past 20s, that next step is so much harder to see. Well, yeah, I feel like 20s, just for people listening, 20s is like, 20 and cup is, is very similar. Now, there's, since Tommy and I finished playing 20s, it sort of turned into like a jersey flag where yep. it, it's not as fun as what it used to be. So when Tommy and I was playing 20s, it was TV games. You played um, before NRL. Pl- always played before NRL. It might have been once or twice a year where you, you actually didn't. Yeah. Now, they said they pushed heaps of money into New South Wales Cup. And when Tommy and I moved into New South Wales Cup, I thought it was going to be like – because what people don't understand is that it's probably the hardest grade, right, 20s in Cup because you've got to work. Or study. Work or study. Like, for example, one of the boys that plays Cups, um, Oscar, he, he's a chippy. Man, he works big hours and he'll still turn up to training three yeah. days a week. Yeah. Man, if I jumped on a shovel or something for a day, don't know like, do I, don't, I don't know how he does not He's been doing it for years yeah. and he's just an absolute trooper. Um, I, just, I just don't understand why there's not more money put into like something like – I feel like people can't develop if they're doing that kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. It's – I reckon it is the hardest, hardest way to crack it. It's like. it's a hard it's the hardest position to be in. Yeah, is to be trying to, trying to obviously earn a living through your mm. full time job or, or whatever else you're well, doing. And, and the then worst, yeah, trying to give a hundred and ten percent to to football after that. And the worst thing is if you're killing it in the comp, means means sweet FA. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, it doesn't matter. Like we've both been there. Um, it means nothing. And then you got these kids that. Would be you know eighteen nineteen to get development contracts, which yeah. was something we didn't have when we were we sort of just missed that boat. Mm. Um, and not 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 that that's a bad thing that they're getting that thing. I think it's incredible that they're getting that you know exposure. But I remember when we come through twenties, like our second year, Whitey didn't let any of us pl- go up to train with full time because it all go it went to all the boys' head the year before. Yeah. I don't know if you remember yeah. like all those boys that were sort of yeah I can't remember some of that yeah. Um, because obviously we still staying with twenties, but like we we ended up training a fair bit with NRL that year, um, which was good. But we we were never full time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I feel like that's that's where they're going wrong. But yeah, like by the way, Tommy Tommy and I didn't play NRL. Tommy got very close. I would say that <laughs> played it played some trials um, with NRL, which was sick for Tommy. Which is a fucking what thing? What I just don't understand is that people don't understand how hard it actually is to get to twenties. How hard it is to get to cup? Like. Mm. 
like I'm not saying this be just because of our sake, but it's actually a massive achievement. Like I think it's like something like one percent in the in Australia. Yeah. Play NRL. Yeah. Or play a top tier sport. I remember all the stats they used to tell us when you were in under sixteens and they'd be like, Look, out of all the people in this room and there'd be like forty forty of you all sitting there and they're like, three of you will actually, you know, go through like statistically, only mm. three of you out of all those forty will go through to get like a top thirty contract. Um, that's probably pretty accurate looking back at that. Yeah, and, and you don't program that when that's that's there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I think if there was another, if they used, you know, it was sort of top forty when we were sort of coming through, yeah, and then yeah. that year sort of filled it out. I think it would have been good if for both of us if there was top forty for the next two years. Yeah, it would have been nice. But obviously, we are where we are, and and that's just life. So enough footy chat, but <laughs> just, just an understanding of like, I feel like rugby league puts a lot of things on hold for young fellas. Mm. Work. You want to do an apprenticeship, you want to go to uni. Everything gets delayed because social life. Yeah, social life. Because if, if, you, if yeah, if you're doing a degree, you got to do it part time. Yeah. If you're doing an apprenticeship, you can't really do an apprenticeship yeah. because you you can't say because some days we play Thursday, some days we play Friday. You have got to have a really understandable boss. That's where I think I think that's the hardest part about it is you'll never get you can never get into a routine with it because you don't know what day you play, you don't know what day you train. Like with with cup, especially up here. Mm. Um, the Very training great, days would, would change on the Tuesday and they'd tell you, oh, well, we're going to train on Thursday, but now first grade needed to train doing a pose on yeah. Wednesday instead yeah. of the Thursday. So now I've got to get work off again mm. just to train on Wednesday. Yeah. And if you don't train, you don't play. It's simple as that. So, yeah. All right. Enough footy chat. Excuse me. Now, Tommy, growing up in the Snowy Mountains, right, we've never really touched on, say, for example, mentors, right? Now... Obviously, growing up in the snowy mountains, not a massive, not a massive, uh, massive community. Yeah, same as same as kind of Dubbo. Like, yeah, probably Dubbo is probably a little bit bigger than the snowy mountains, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> I feel like I haven't. I didn't think about this until the other night when I was writing the potty up. Right, like, is there there really one bloke that you can look back and you think, right, oh, like, I want to be not necessarily like that bloke, but I want to be able to, you know help people like that and be able to, you know, get on with people so well as, as someone you looked up to, I guess you could say? I wouldn't really say I had too many mentors down there. Um, I would probably well, just even go back to family. To yeah, right. Um, yep. Obviously, my mum and dad are probably the hardest working people that I've ever met. Yep. Um, and uh, probably still are. And, yeah, and obviously my brother got me out a lot, uh, kept me out of a lot of trouble as a kid as well. So. Yep. Um, I guess I'd always just look up to him, being my older brother down there. Yeah. Um, especially even rugby, he was he was a bit of a talent back in the day, um, and then he just enjoyed other things too much. So, uh, I feel like Brian. I remember playing him a couple of years back. The quickest, quickest man. Yeah, he's lightning. Eh? It's just like. No, I didn't runner. get any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he made a break and he didn't see me coming because I blindsided him. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only reason I got him because he couldn't see me. Otherwise, uh, he would have absolutely burned me. But, yeah, I'm just thinking, like, obviously your parents you've looked up to and that kind of thing, so it's pretty similar for me. So Yeah, just oh, obviously lucky to have, have parents like that to look up to. Not everybody gets that. So I'm um, definitely grateful for that. But, no, nah, look, uh, our school wasn't wasn't the best school in the world. Um, I didn't have a lot of mentors around there. Yeah. Um, you just kind of keep your friends group nice and close, yeah. Then and yeah, yeah. Very mentors similar. just wasn't really a thing for me. Mm. Mood, mood, vibe, vibey, very vibey. <laughs> now I'm gonna throw it your way here, Tommy. Um, movements on the summer collection. Mm. Now I know we're gonna touch on this after the podcast, but I guess for listeners, um. Supporters and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, because I know Big he's fans. been hanging yep, out yep. for this summer collection. Yeah, I've been, been hearing a lot about <laughs> this. <laughs> Can you give the people what they want in terms of what's coming, colorways, or just a little bit of an insight to to what could be in the summer collection? Heaps simple colorways. Uh, we've gone again. I think we're really refining that, nice and down. Just mm. kind of your monochrome and your your neutral colors coming. Um, but the big thing is we've got shorts coming. So we've uh, the only the only issue is obviously <laughs> <laughs> ding ding <laughs> sorry boy <laughs> I was meant to be a clap I didn't know which one was which <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah the only thing is we've got to wait for samples still so haven't yeah. approved any samples coming in um, 
obviously Sydney's in lockdown, so things are a little bit tougher. Yep. The the factory is running at about fifty percent um, capacity, so uh, things are obviously taking a little bit more time. Yep. Which is why we kind of try to move it along a bit, yeah, a bit faster, um, get it started now. So so it's in here. Yeah. Time for summer. Rough time for potential drop. Uh, well, hopefully November. We, we're looking at late October, November. Um, Beautiful. Given that everything comes. Obviously, yeah. we'd like to do it sooner than that, but just the way we haven't even received the samples that we've paid for. Yeah. Good, yeah. good three weeks, four weeks ago now. Yeah. Um, but short samples should be here hopefully this week. Beauty. You can run those. So they're just like a sweat short. Um, they should be. They, they look, man, a nice heavy cotton. So Yeah, um, keen. Got black ones and, and like an off-white one as well. So Beauty. Um, Hopefully they're all sweet and we can run with those. I think they'll fire, man. Um, we're moving to a new supplier too. Uh, well, we're testing oh no. a new supplier. So changes, changes, good changes though. It's good because I feel like the, the shorts would be cheaper than what yeah, we yeah, intended involved. to go through our other yeah. uh, supplier with. And, and it's not like – so how we've been running it is we've been just getting um, – it's called white labelling. So we've just essentially been getting blank um, – these blank shirts or, or shorts or – uh, jumpers and everything that we're getting, we're chucking our logo and tags on it. Um, and there's like a wholesaler overseas that, that sells all of this. The problem with that is there's too many middlemen involved. So, so there's many. a wholesaler that it then sends to someone else who sends it to the people that we buy it off. Um, and obviously everyone, everyone needs process. to get their, yeah, everyone needs to get their margins and then it takes too long. So um, we're kind of moving towards a supplier where we've got a lot more creative control um, we can do our own tech packs and, and, and kind of build through it that way and, and make more adjustments to the garments themselves. And Yeah, I'm excited um, for that. Because yeah. it's just little things like, you know, say, for example, the drawstring's not yeah, right. Or yeah. Like with the, with the old supply, I feel like you can't really change that. No, you know you what I mean? Because yeah, it's such a they process. Had their, they had their blanks and they had their, their stock. And So obviously with this one, when everything comes in, we can send it back and say, can you just tighten this up a little bit or can you yep. can just run this a different way? Yeah, exactly, Which man. is sick. Um, yeah, obviously that it's kind of – it's a jump in both ways because – in terms of the the price per unit, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but you've got to get more units. Um, yeah. Per block. Um, yeah. So that obviously that's a big move on, on our behalf to to really get our marketing and and really get our, our brand strategy right around yep. that uh, to make sure that we can actually uh, sell these amounts. But I'm pretty confident in us and. Obviously, this is what we want to do anyway. So this is you, you got to grow eventually. We can't sit um, there and keep doing the same thing. So that's exactly right. Um, what are you? What are the shorts going to sell for? Roughly. Should be uh, fifty to sixty dollars, I'd say. That's so cool. Hopefully, we're hopefully landing at sixty dollar mark, which is pretty good for shorts, I think, for a small company. Well, when you think about it, like, um, I know there's some brands like Earls, for example, where they oh, run that B-ball ones, shorts yeah. where they're like a hundred and oh, ten yeah, bucks. Yeah, there's some luxury ones out there that can go for. And then some. even white ATR shorts are pretty expensive. Yeah, they'd be eighty, ninety, I think. Yeah, so I feel like we've landed in a good market. Yeah, th- I think that's always been our goal: is just be that little bit, make sustainability a little bit more accessible for people yep. obviously doing everything more sustainable is expensive but we're trying our best to keep Absolutely. prices down and and make it accessible so that's yep. the goal there um and i'm just oh, fuck, i'm so excited for the the samples to show up <laughs> every time I, like Sample a delivery days, van man. drives past or something i'm peeking out the window well, like, yeah because oh, they come we? to ours first <laughs> like when yeah. those um i was just sitting out the front the other day and, and then those the rest of those tees turned yeah, up and yeah. i was like what what is this i, was, I thought it was the samples for the shorts yeah i was I like fuck, they got here quick i wish um but content moving forward, Tommy, you've obviously built um, some strategies to part way with some smaller, which smaller uh, sizes, which is I feel like is working. Yep, yep. Um, I'm still trying those out, trying to get a little bit more out of the box. Um, I kind of want to run like maybe a, a bit of a Facebook advertisement, um, yep. just really based around those those smaller sizes. Yeah. So we can clear a bit of those out. Yeah. Get a bit of cash flow and keep moving. Yeah. So how's the how's the brain feeling in lockdown, and uh, do you feel like lockdown is is helping, not necessarily you as a business owner, but obviously you as well? Um, do you feel like it's helping other businesses grow and potentially think about things? Uh, it it depends on the business, and it depends where you're at. Obviously, let's say um, it's an online. Yeah, online business. You have the potential. Obviously, it has the potential to help you grow. Massively, yeah. Um, especially if you if you're like me, I'm obviously got the part time job as well. Uh, but luckily enough, with all that being in lockdown, we're getting subsidised by the government, so I can keep affording to live. But I can put all my time into into bandwagon instead of just part of the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Having said that, you got to 
you, <laughs> you got to actually put all your, like yesterday, for instance, I don't think I did much at all. I, I sat on the Xbox and. That's um, cool. What were we playing yesterday? S- uh, a zombie game. Oh, oh yeah. A zombie game. <laughs> You're mad on those Red Dead and that, eh? Pretty sick. Anyway. <laughs> 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 like, I didn't do much at all. So th- that's the part that's hard. It's, it's just reeling yourself in and, and yeah. being disciplined enough. Um, like anyone, I've got good days and bad days, and, and yesterday was probably a bad day. Nothing wrong with that, bro. We're all due for them. Um, I guess when you wake up every day, bro, like, do you do you have the drive to just, like, I know you, you're an early riser, like, similar to me, I guess. Yeah, been lately, yeah. Do you just get up and get after it, or do you got to drag yourself up out of bed? Oh, I'm pretty good lately of, of getting up pretty early. Um, I feel like the earlier I, I get up, the better. If And especially if I can just get up, and start moving straight away. Straight in the um, shower, 40 minutes. I feel away. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I used to do. used to wake up. Tommy Cronin loves a long shower. shower. <laughs> just sit down on the ground and rest my head on the ground. Oh, I love that shit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if I get up, um, I've been trying to go for a run at Warners Bay every now and then. Yeah. Um, and every time I do it, I just think, like, this is so much better that the moment I get up early, yep. quick run, even if it's only a short run. Oh, it just wakes you up, eh? The moment after that, after you have a shower and everything, you're just ready mm. to go and you feel like you can take the whole day on and yep. get... I get more, you know, more done before twelve o'clock on that day than Absolutely. I would any if other time. If you wake up late, um, and there's still times where I wake up at six a.m. and I just think, nah, I won't go for a run today, and and then I do nothing until nine, you know, nine a.m. Yeah, so it's just I about getting that that morning right. Endorphins um, <laughs> kicking, but it's just that routine I haven't been able to to build just yet. With I've just been in hospitality too long. Mm. I just never the had a routine. Balance, man. Yeah, late night stuff. Mm. Don't miss it. <laughs> No, I don't at all. I think I miss just hanging out and just seeing all the drunk people. Just miss hanging out with you, man. That's yeah. all. <clears throat> um, growing up as a kid, Tommy, as well, we touched on it earlier, but like outside noise, I feel like you and I were sort of sheltered from that in terms of, you know, I feel like I I know myself, I was sheltered till I was about 17 when I moved to camera when I had to like, you know, f- grow up. Yeah. Now, thrown into the real world. Just like thrown into the real yeah. world, didn't know what was going on. Did you Did you ever have any like... I know I was definitely didn't until then, but like, did you have any anxiety or stress or like, like any kind of depressions or anything like that? Or you sort of just like always on the go? Um, not as a kid, I was all right, uh, especially down in Jindabyne. Yeah, just yeah. I'm lucky with the, the friend group that I had down there, yeah. um, and obviously family as well. So I was always heaps comfortable. I think uh, I don't know about anxiety, but I was always pretty shy when it came to to football. Um, yeah, just cause it's it wasn't. I don't know. It was it was all my friends were a lot different to all of the football players that we yeah. you know we yeah um, we always came around, especially in Canberra and, and up here as well. So I was just not used to that demographic, I suppose. So I was I was very quiet um, probably through all my years, especially when I um, when I did the preseason the NRL. I was very yeah. quiet up there. Um, just tried to keep my head down. I was just trying to make the next step all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I found when I was at university and things like that, I was a l- little more outgoing. Um, I don't know why that was, just how I was back then. Yeah. Obviously, nowadays, I'm pretty easy going. I don't get bothered by too much. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. What about you? No, nah, I feel like, yeah. I'm, what's, the, what's the difference between, like, what's the introvert and extrovert? What's the one where it's happy to just stay at home? Do introvert. You know? Yeah. yeah introvert. See, I could happily do that every day of the week. Yeah. See, I'm that person where I could go for two beers. Like you already know that, but yeah. I can go for two beers and, and I'll just, just disappear. Home, I'll just yeah, go home. 100%, yeah. uh, but like when I know I need to have a couple or like I want to have a couple, like the thing is I can rip in, but like yeah. I can never be that person where like, like don't get me wrong. I love being social and I love being around people as I always seem to be the center of attention and I always have to make myself the center <laughs> yeah, of attention. Yeah. <laughs> You're good at it. <laughs> so just uh, like, I mean, I can talk underwater. That's the thing. And I, I love, I love bouncing off other people, you know what yeah. I mean? Like someone bringing good energy, then I'm all about it. And if they don't bring it, then it's just like, yeah, see you later. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I feel like these days, I think, I think it's just the fact that we, we didn't have the social media and the, the platforms that the kids have now. Like we, mm. we were home before, I don't know if it was in junior, but we were home before when the straight lights are on, you've got to be home. Yeah. Um, and then you just fly in the door, dinner's ready, you know, same thing every day. Like yeah. you go to school and you'd, you'd stay outside and play yeah. until, until whatever time it was. But then now, I feel like the kids are so exposed to, you know, like kids have got social media, like six or seven. They can look at whatever they want, man. That's exactly right, and which is dangerous. And I feel like everyone says when they have kids that they won't put them on their iPads and stuff. But the moment they start crying, they give them That's it. That's exactly right. And I've never, obviously never had a kid, so... I feel like it'd be a lot harder than what it actually is, and that it obviously haven't? that no, not yet. Okay. 
<laughs> Maybe somewhere. Yeah. I don't know about them yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't uh, met them, they're not yours, man. That's exactly right, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, yeah, they're, they're a lot more exposed to everything and I feel like that they'd be a lot more struggles in their life. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess it's good and bad because at the end of the day, like everything they're exposed to is the world that we live in. Like it's not like it's they're exposed to a fake world and, mm. and in a way I guess we were kind of just hidden from that, from everything going on. Like all of this stuff is happening whether you want to yeah. look at it or not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it's good and bad. And, um, people, they've got to come out of it good and people are going to come out of it not so good. Mm. Thanks again for joining me, Thomas Cronin. It's good to be back, man. Wow. It's been a long time, guys. Hopefully lockdown's out soon and um, everything can get back to a little bit of normality. Yeah, so any feedback, guys, once again, much appreciated. Thomas Cronin and I always like that. It's been a pleasure. Um, so, yeah, once again, thanks for joining us on the Bandwagon Bible. Thomas Cronin and I will probably see each other when lockdown's over or potentially before. You never know. We'll keep you updated. Um, last thing, stay safe, stay groovy. Tell me anything else. That's it, boys. Peace. Peace. Peace.